Andrew, you can start. A very good afternoon to everyone present here. Mozilla Campus Club of FRCRC is happy to be back with an exciting workshop on design validation using double diamond approach. We are really proud to have with us our speaker for today's event, Mr. Umesh Rathod, who is a think tank working for enhancing the startup ecosystem of India through mentoring and research in collaboration with global startup ecosystems. He is a techno management postgraduate, the founder of Lean Campus Startups, and an entrepreneur at heart. We are honored to have you as a speaker for this event and hope everyone has a great and informative session. Now I'd like to call upon Mr. Umesh Rathod to continue with the session ahead. A very good afternoon to all of you. And thank you, Andrew, for that uh, brief introduction. First of all, let me also thank Sunil Chaudhary, sir, and the team Mozilla Campus CRC for inviting me for this session. Uh, I would request you all to turn off your cams so we can have an interactive session because I believe you know already a lot about design thinking and you know uh, the double diamond model approach. And this session I want it to be you know one which will uh, bring out your curiosity as well as help you solve your doubts about it. And as discussed with one of the you know members, this session was already conducted last year. So there might be some students who have gained some insights. I would like to gain some feedback uh, on the same, and it would be happy to listen to your thoughts about it. So it would be great if you could turn on your cams because already it's an online session and uh, i don't want to just talk to you know clue uh, of the images uh, you know which could be seen yeah So, Vivian, can we start with you? Hi, Sunil, sir. Hello, sir. Yes. Okay. What about others? Hello, participants. Can you please start your webcam? Okay. Yeah. So let us start. And meanwhile, I'll be having some questions. So I hope that you will be open to answer it. Yes, participants, please feel free to interact with the speaker. I hope my screen is visible. Yes, sir. Okay. So we are here to discuss about the double diamond approach. And uh, let me start by giving an example uh, of my engineering days. Uh, when I did my engineering, before that, I did my diploma from Vivekanan uh, Polytechnic. And during that time, I used to see engineers making robots in their you know, campus. <clears throat> so we were divided. There was VESET and VSP, which is a Polytechnic. So I used to see this, you know, seniors making robots which can follow line and radio controlled, computer controlled and whatnot. And it made me curious. And it made me think, you know, 
these robots are already been designed by them. They have already written a program for it and they're already using it. So when I will come of their age, I'll be learning the same thing maybe. Uh, I should not wait for it. I should get my hands you know, dirty and uh, go outside the class, meet them and learn something from them which could be of some value. That made me curious and with that curiosity, uh, you know, uh, we started making friends with them. We learned how to build robots. When I entered into engineering, I already looked for some like-minded people who could actually, you know, uh, who don't want to get into the regular curriculum. I'm like, yes, obviously they have to study. We, we have to secure some marks. But at the same time, you can see the way technology is evolving, right? Today, uh, many of you might be aware of NFTs. Uh, today, many of you might be having Bitcoins. You might be, uh, you know, having some kind of uh, cryptocurrency. But uh, this is not part of the curriculum. And you can see there is a big gap, right? So as an engineer, uh, as a person, it is always good to get your you know, insights about new things happening across the world because there is a huge gap between industry and academia. The way industry wants to move ahead and the way academia works. And uh, as mentioned, which is one of the topics of today's session, how double diamond approach is important with respect to industry. That will be my area of focus. I will talk about a little bit about the models which are available. Uh, pertaining to design validation. Uh, but more focus will be on the double diamond approach. And I'll give you some uh, you know, foolproof methods so you can note it down by which you can actually execute a double diamond approach for your ideas. Right. So once you go through this session, once you go through this video, you'll be getting to know how to deal with it. So let us begin with the session. Now, we all have been through a pandemic and it has been troublesome for all of us, especially I feel pity for the students because you did not get time to go out, uh, you know, and I believe the growth happens uh, in peer to peer learning. So you can see on the screen over here, uh, there are different masks available and I believe each one of you will be having a different kind of a mask which you can see on the screen. Some of you might be having a temporary or a, you know, use and throw mask, which is a surgical mask. Some of you might be using bandana while going on bikes or for road trips now. Uh, you know, you can see different masks, different categories of them. And why it is so? Because not one design suits all. And it's giving an opportunity to new designers to come up with variety of designs. And there will be always a situation, there will be always this opportunity available that there could be something which could be done in every field of work, right? Earlier we used to think rockets could be designed in a way which cannot land, you know, on the uh, after, after launching the space, they cannot come and land on the earth. But that was made possible by a team of Elon Musk. Similarly, there have been various uh, designs from Tesla vehicles, which are working on battery powered, you know, uh, uh, vehicles. And we are seeing how it is evolving at a drastic stage. So uh, what is the opportunity for a young entrepreneur or a person who is solving problem is basically, you know, uh, figuring out what the problem is. Uh, many of the times the startup fail because there is no market, like 40% of the startup fail because the product which they created did not have the market at all. So there are various reasons why startup fails and we need to know where we can go wrong. So let's start with that, you know, as an insight. So first of the method is basically we need to understand what is the process. Now, when Bipin contacted me for this session, uh, he mentioned that it needs to be with respect to software. Uh, but I believe the double diamond approach or any kind of design validation is not limited to service, but I guess it is, has to do with the overall product as a delivery because even though you are giving a, you know, a virtual product to someone to use, 
but at the end there is some kind of a maintenance which needs to be taken care of there is some kind of interaction with human which happens uh, so let's understand what is the basic you know method which was available one is getting to know the specification what we are going to design as a software then we design it then we kind of go and validate it and then we evolve according now this was a basic uh, you know representation of the process how designing happened in a software world now it represents a description of process from some particular perspective okay but there are not much of an inputs there is not much of a research which uh, goes into this basic process so it got evolves and we have some generic software process models one is a waterfall model uh, then comes the evolution in that same uh, model and then comes the component based software uh, engineering the system is assembled from existing components over so there are various models which are available uh, which uh, uh, you know are known to us i'll not be discussing much of all of uh, all of those because now they, these things are becoming extinct now everyone works on you know double diamond uh, model of designing because it's the most world it is the most robust i can say method of you know ideating or coming to an uh, understanding what kind of uh, product or service will suit to your customer or can work in a market right so uh, an example for formal development where a waterfall like process is used is uh, having a specific specifications available in hand there is not to look left and right you know the way the horses run in the race you are given a aim and that is you have to achieve but most of the times startups are something which are hitting in the you know blind I mean, like hitting in the dark and they are not aware as to what they are trying to achieve um, and uh, they have a preconceived notion okay this is the problem of my customer or these are the problems faced by so many people let us come and create a product for this but double diamond approach helps you interact with the user the person who is going to uh, finally use your product so i believe the first notion we need to break is we are here to solve other people's problem and we need to get to know them right we need to understand exactly what is their problem what is that underlying you know problem statement what is that they are not telling us but is the problem even customers or the users are also not clear as to what sometimes the problem is so double diamond approach actually help us in understanding so waterfall model is something which is having a definition then we design then we do a implementation testing integration with the system for testing and then uh, the operation happens and we get into it now this Excuse was me, yes so sir. your slide hasn't changed uh, now no sir it's on the first slide only uh, i'll just stop share screen and Is it visible now? Yes, sir. Yes, it's so changing. you could just put it on slideshow. Uh, slideshow. Sure, sure. So let me know which slides you have not seen. The slide. Uh, we have visible. only seen the first one. This one was not visible. No, no, no. Oh, only the you first one. You have told me then. Okay. So this was about the mask. Actually, there are different types of masks which we have been using then. Uh, the software process which we have just gone through specification design validation by evolution and then i was discussing about the three basic models uh, how waterfall model was uh, initially used and then how it got to world so waterfall model basically requires a specific definition is a requirement or you can say industry oriented that industry gives you a specification or you know what i want to design xyz thing uh, i need xyz app for my company and these are the things it needs to be uh, having and then from there you pick it up as a designer or a, a startup founder or someone 
who is uh, providing such solutions, right? So it becomes more of an easy task. But when you are creating an app, which is uh, people are not aware of, you are not exactly clear whether there will be demand for that app or not. That's where the double diamond approach comes into process. So we were talking about the process iteration, the waterfall model got evolved. Uh, then the evolutionary model had surface specification, design implementation, validation, and evolution. And then uh, the, the engineering process basically had a feasibility study. A feasibility study is something where you actually uh, you know, go to the uh, company who has given you some uh, requirements, then you have a word with them, you check out your cost, how much they are able to pay or not, what specifications they want, what platform they will be using for the software, uh, should it be Java enabled or it should be APK file for Android, should it have an OS uh, for iOS. Uh, so you need to, you know, get, get a feasibility, what kind of a team you have, who can execute it or not. And then there are uh, requirements uh, uh, and analysis. Then there is a specification validation, which is connected to the system model, user and system requirements. And then requirements document is prepared, finally, on which the basis uh, you know, will be, that will be the foundation on which you'll be creating that application, that software, that tool. Uh, but in this process, you know, can you tell me what is a missing linkage? Why this uh, model is not a foolproof one? Anyone? Yes. Anyone would like to try? There is nothing like a perfect answer. If you would like to try, you can yes. share your views. Okay, so there's not much of a feedback. It's not happening in real time. And in this, what is happening is you are having a specification, then you go and directly start working and prepare a final product and deliver it. Now, what is happening in this process is, suppose your specification goes a little bit here and there, you are getting into the whole process of developing it, and then you actually you know, go and deliver it, and the guy for whom you prepared the software or the application, he will be in splits because he might not expect uh, you know, that same product from you because there is some kind of a maybe a miscommunication or there was in pivoting that product or developing it it was not effectively done uh, and and in this there is no communication happening in between of the process so we are not actually doing any kind of uh, uh, what we can say prototyping and that is the big failure of this model right uh, you know even when the sets of the movie is created so the movie sets cost you nearly crores of rupees. And even before the sets go into making, you have something called as a prototype of the set. In fact, for huge buildings, you know, which has been created, like the campus where you are located in Bandra, some architect might have given you a design. Uh, you know, the founders of the institution, they would have seen the design, they would have seen the prototype, how the final product will look like. And then based on that, they would have given some insights. Okay, this is uh, this needs to change, or this will not work, or these are the problems. So we'll be discussing how it got overcome by the double diamond uh, approach. And when we talk about validation, uh, you know, and verification. So verification is something where you are given a specification. Now you are just verifying that okay, this is uh, the product we are building. Right? And are we building the right product? So the software which you build on that approach should conform its specification. When you are validating, and if you ask the same question, are we building the right product? The software should do what the user really requires. So it's real time, right? It's real time. It's it's basically uh, from the demand side. You are preparing the product or service. 
So what is expected at the end user? So this is a double diamond approach. This is a double diamond model used for design validation. Uh, design thinking, you can say it is part of, it is also part of uh, a startup process if you are working on a new idea. So this four part guide is for anyone who wants to understand the methods designers use and try them out for themselves. And uh, here you can see that there are two diamonds. The one which is uh, on the blue side, which is analysis and synthesis, then again analysis and then synthesis. So we'll be talking about this in brief, how these four areas that is discover, define, develop and deliver actually work in this model and how we can make sure that it is going to be useful if we are going to do a startup, if uh, someday we plan to do a software you know, uh, business or start software or app-based product. So let's uh, take a look at it. So first uh, part of the double diamond approach is called discover. Okay, you have already seen that discover is this part, okay, which is written as analysis at the top. I will see what it actually means. Uh, it is used to keep our perspectives wide, allowing for broad range of ideas and influences. So as you can see, you know, the arrows are moving away, okay, the analysis arrow. So it's getting broader. So what we are trying to do here is basically we are going to broaden our vision, like in Harry Potter movie, I guess in uh, Prisoners of Basketball, there's this lady you know, who uh, is part of the astrology class, she says to her students, broaden your vision. So what we are doing here is when you are thinking of solving some problem, you tend to figure out, you tend to create a space, you tend to create a project space. Uh, if you are a corporate, if you're a startup, again, you don't have such a big space, but you kind of, you know, use some tool, maybe a notebook, maybe some diary, maybe some uh, small space in your, you know, uh, uh, startup, uh, you know, where you'll be executing. It can be a bad bedroom, it could be a garage. So wherever it is, you will create some project space. Now, what is it basically? What What is going to happen in it? So this space will be focused on talking about new ideas. You will be having, uh, you know, uh, various ideas written on this uh, space. You'll be sticking some pictures about that idea. Whatever thoughts come to you will be there. Why it is useful, what it is useful for. So it gives you a zest about what new idea you're thinking about and how you want to, you know, uh, evolve or whatever new idea comes to your mind in that space. So you kind of put it across in that space and it's visible to your colleagues. Anyone who has having some kind of an insights about it, they will try to add something to that space. Now, how you can use it? You can, you can use the walls in that space where you put this posters or you can use a blackboard and you construct a story around it, you know, about the problem which you're trying to solve or if you're kind of finding, finding a new idea, what will happen with that idea, how it's going to change the world and you can reorganize the space as and when you are evolving, as and when new ideas strike you, as and when you know uh, something new uh, approach comes into picture. So initially we are discovering, we are trying to ask this question, okay, uh, about what is this new idea. Then comes uh, the observation. Now we are still talking about discover. In observation, we are talking about what is happening, <clears throat> okay? What is happening? When you are talking about certain idea, how it is going to change, you know, the current situation? Because every idea is somewhere or the other solving some kind of a problem, some kind of a glitch. So what is it going to do? What is it going to be useful for? Now, why it is going to be useful? 
because when you are observing okay you can observe as a third person you can observe by you know uh, uh, having some people actually uh, enact your you know vision or whatever you have thought about and then see what happens in that process why it is useful is it helps you to build on you know those ideas it helps you to narrow it helps you to actually uh, you know think about in depth as to what will happen now how you can do it you can actually uh, you know go to certain places and visualize it suppose you are trying to come up with a a new restaurant okay and uh, it, it will be a very different one which is not the same as the current restaurant so what i can say is you should go to a restaurant you should go and visit 10 20 restaurants and be observant what happens okay what does the waiter do how is the process how the customer comes in what happens next so these are the insights which you need to keep a check on if you are really trying to come up with some new you know unique method of uh, you know uh, new method of serving your guests serving your you know uh, customers in a hotel so what different you can do so those ideas will come when you observe second is user diaries what is it user diaries is basically where you allow the user to note down uh, what is happening you know with him or her so he or she is in a situation and they are noting it down now uh so the basic idea is to note it down second would be to capture a photo third would be uh to capture a video right so if you are talking about some shabby curtains in a hotel so they can capture the photo of the curtains if you are talking about a hotel where they have improper bedding or the rooms are not clean or uh, so they are facing any of the problems so user diary is basically what they have captured what they have noted down what they have you know experience and it is useful for us because we are gaining insights from them we are gaining more information and how can i do it so you can ask your some of the users actually using it uh, what is it that they actually going to you know uh, what is that they have actually felt and how you are going to actually change or what is that unique feature you are going to act to after this comes uh, being your user so you don't believe what your users have said what they have captured maybe what they have written right as i mentioned earlier sometimes customers also are not aware what exactly the problem is so you can be the user right you can be the user in the sense you go into their shoes you go and explore what is the problem they have faced so you become the customer go to that xyz restaurant what is mentioned by the user and check out for yourself what happened what is do, do you find the shabby you know curtains do you find the you know the bedding or whatever is not clean uh, the waiter is not coming on time maybe what is that exactly happening uh, so you are becoming the customer you are becoming becoming the end user yourself and imagining or uh, and exploring over there in that situation what would have happened why it is useful it is useful for you to get that experience as i mentioned earlier solving a problem is one part of the story identifying the actual problem is the other and many of the startup founders think you know what i'm trying to do is very important for the world world needs this kind of a product right now and i'm going to build it but the story is different right you have to really work and uh, read on these materials which talks about how startups are not able to match the you know the market demand what is that missing over there and this process of double diamond approach you know gets you there so being your user is the first thing as a startup founder as a problem solver i can do right i am thinking from the end users perspective what challenges i might face or the user might face right so how you can do it you can actually visit the restaurants you can actually be in those places you can enact the situations and you know be uh, kind of get an assist about what happened 
then comes the uh, brainstorming once you have gone through this process you have you know uh, tried out by understanding what challenges your user might have face you do a brainstorming what is it brainstorming is a process by which you come up with new ideas in a group what it is useful for it helps you to come with brilliant ideas many ideas uh, as many ideas as possible within a given stipulated time and how you do it in double diamond approach you don't limit your ideas okay you defer judgment you avoid criticism one conversation at a time go for many you know ideas go for quantity have as wide ideas as possible you are not going to confine it there is no limitation you have to think that all resources in the world are available for you to solve that xyz problem which you are thinking about stay focused on the problem at hand which you are thinking about be visualistic right how the problem will be solved how you can visualize things what is happening in that situation if the product which you are creating comes into existence and then after all of this is done you cluster the ideas uh, for voting amongst your team members because brainstorming is something which could be done between 2 5 10 people so whoever is part of that process you need to cluster the ideas which are given by all the team members and then you go for vote as to you know uh, declutter and have some clarity after this you will be choosing a sample what is choosing a sample now when you are solving a problem obviously it's not for one person you know you are not that very niche uh, category uh, startup that you will be solving for one ten uh, a few thousand uh, you know handful of people you will be solving problem for many many people out there because that's how your growth in, you know is based on if you are going to solve a problem for very niche people or either your product should be very highly priced you know and it will be very niche available in the market so i believe most of you will be solving the problem for the large number of people and uh, when we say large number of people we cannot go and examine uh, everyone's taste and you know expectations we cannot match everyone's expectations and for that <clears throat> we need to choose some sample right as i showed the slide about the mask there are different masks available to suit different people so different designers will come up with different ideas but we need to identify for whom the problem we are solving what age group they belong to what strata of society they come from what is their background what kind of education they have so the sample is basically giving you an idea who will be your target audience for whom you are solving the problem okay so what is it it is a persona or you can say the the, the group of uh, the one of the person from the group, larger group who meets your you know, product who will be buying your product who will be your end user uh, what it is useful for it gives you assist as to who are your uh, you know end users at large and how you can do it as i mentioned <clears throat> you can identify this person through the whole process okay of uh, uh you know uh, what age group what demographic what strata what kind of education what uh, kind of lifestyle right what kind of salary all those aspects come into choosing a sample so you are identifying one person you know for a group of say 1000 people uh, who could be your possible end user and then you are uh, keeping him in mind okay and move ahead with the next process so next process is basically quantitative surveys in which you identify such samples so you are not taking one person so one person who can match 1000 people likewise you will identify uh, 5 to 10 to maybe 20 people who match your end user capacity right it could be of different gender it could be of different age group it could be of different uh, people with different academics as a background right so you need to identify them and now you can go and do some kind of a quantitative survey so quantitative what, what is a survey basically you are going and asking some questions uh, you know and you are trying to dig in uh, what problems you know they are facing and what kind of situation uh, or what kind of change they want 
So why it is useful? It helps you to understand uh, whether you have you're, you're thinking about the right sample, you know, as your target. Uh, do they match the kind of product you are de designing for? And also, it helps you in knowing uh, what is the expectations of it. And how you can do it? You can either do a phone call or you can take an appointment with these people. You can go to a location, uh, a live location where they can meet you. They can give you some insights, which is obviously getting your hands dirty. So you need to actually do this process to uh, get the quantitative service. And it gives you a good idea as to how many people are facing an XYZ problem and gives you kind of an exist whether you're going on the right direction. After this, once you have some quantitative surveys with you of 15, 20 or people, some of them obviously will be fake, right? The people tend to give fake information. Uh, some of them will be you know, useful for you. So you can group the similar insights out of those 15, 20 or questionnaires. And there's no limit, okay? There's no limit that 15, 20 questionnaires should be there. It could be more. You can go to you, you can go and meet 100 people if you have a good team maybe 2000 people for that matter uh, suppose you are creating a new delivery app so you can have 1000 restaurants where you can send some people you can get some feedback in different you know metro cities and tire burn tire to likewise after this when you narrow down to certain clusters of these insights which you have got you go for fast visualization Fast visualization is basically used for uh, imagining uh, your solution for these people. What will happen in that situation? And you are drawing this. You know, you are drawing it in the sense not like a MF Hussain or a great artist. You're just making and scribbling things which is visible and understandable by you and your team. So you can scribble certain things that how this you know, situation could be overcome. Uh, who is using a product? What is the scenario? You can do that. Uh, it gives you a vision as to how these people whom you have interviewed, you have taken a survey, you know, would uh, feel after using it or how you can connect with them. So for this, you need to scribble things around. You need to kind of draw and put some ideas on the then you can also go for some secondary research once you have done some primary one where you go to google you tag some insights about your research the topic for which you are creating the product or the kind of the problem solving topic which you have selected and you can uh, go through some research papers maybe go through uh, some startups already existing in that space in some other part of the world uh, why it is useful? It gives you an idea whether you are the only one solving this problem or there are already people who have taken steps in that area, who have already ventured out, maybe failed, maybe have got succeeded in doing so. So you will come to know what has happened, how did that happen, what went wrong in XYZ case, what went right in ABC case. Right? It's like understanding case studies and it will help you to understand what is what, what method you should uh, you know, use because failure teaches you a lot and start of one and um, it helps you not to do mistakes or avoid certain mistakes so secondary research also validates your primary research right if you have taken some 15 20 examples secondary research whatever material you go through some research papers newspaper articles some books being written you read them you get this idea and uh, Based on that, amongst your team, you can decide what uh, important facets of it could be taken forward. Then comes hopes and fears. So as a team, you need to identify what are the hopes uh, once you are starting to solve this problem. And what are the fears? What is that will not happen? So as a team, you need to be aware, uh, you know, as a problem solver, you need to be aware what is expected as a team and this needs to be mentioned when you start this whole process of pebble diamond approach in that creative space which i talked about earlier where you'll be putting those visions board you know you'll be doing vision boarding and you'll be putting those sticky notes or you'll be putting all the stuff you're 
researching about. So you need to have clarity and this makes all the team members come on same page so that there is no difference, you know, that in team also someone is expecting something to be done for that you know, uh, group of people as a, as a solution. And some of the other members might be thinking, okay, uh, we are thinking X, Y, Z could be the solution to the problem. So hopes and fears uh, helps you to, you know, enhance your vision as a team and bring everyone on the same page. After that comes defining. So you have discovered a lot of things now. You are broadening your vision. Now you come on defining and defining. The first thing is focus groups, right? Focus groups are the people which I mentioned who connect to your sample. Okay. And with these focus groups, you'll be interacting. You'll be getting feedback. You'll be going and again, having a second round of maybe survey, maybe asking them about their the uh, problems that they are facing and getting more insights. So this helps you to again, you know, kind of get uh, confirmation or affirmation on the previous sample which we have, uh, you know, already figured out through a survey. So focus groups are the people who actually help you to do and take, uh, you know, in-depth research in that space. Next is assessment criteria. Now, based on the focus group's output which they have given, now because you are starting to define, now you are narrowing down to certain you know, concepts, certain ideas, you'll be assessing them. So whatever is being said, whatever your research, there will be 10 ideas or five ideas out of that, you have to give assessment. So on the rating of one to five as a team, based on various aspects, right? you have to rate them. One could be technical feasibility. So if you are creating a software, what is the technical feasibility as a team? Can you create it? What is the cost involved? Can you use basic softwares and create it? Or you need to invest a lot. So what is the cost concern? Are you passionate about the idea as a team, right? Because everyone needs to be devoted in solving the problem. And it might take some years maybe. What is a problem? portability and size, you know, what is the customer's concerns uh, when you have interacted with the focus groups, when you interacted in the first survey, what were the insights you got and how you are able to uh, address them. So based on the five ideas we have talked about, based on these uh, four aspects, how you are going to assess, right? So give a rating one to five as a team, let everyone take a call, let everyone take a vote. Based on the top two or three ideas which come up, then you move forward. Then you have comparing notes. Comparing notes gives an insight, more in-depth information from each person's perspective where he or she feels what are the you know positives and negatives about the ideas which you have which have come out from the assessment criteria. What is the best could be done? What are the challenges which you would face? So these are the comparing notes for that ideas which you have. Come across, right? It gives you more enhancement, it gives you more insights about the ideas which you are trying to solve and what could go right and what could go wrong in that process, right? So, because in the initial stage you had a very wild idea, you had kept a broader vision, now you are narrowing down, uh, you are narrowing down. So, there will be certain things which will work, there are certain things which will not work. So, write all your ideas on individual sticky note, reduce the number of notes after that. You know, whatever things are not required or common or similar, just remove them. Compare pair of notes in turn and put the most important on the top. When no more swaps are able to be made, uh, the list will be in the order of importance. So which is the topmost criteria as a team? You need to decide, right? And common things which have been put up uh, because all the team members will be doing this simultaneously. So then you need to make sure you put it in sync. And in the uh, you know, the priority wise, the most important one will be at the top. So once you have done that, then comes the drivers and hurdles. So again, once the ideas have been listed from top to bottom based on importance, again there will arise some drivers and hurdles. Maybe there is no feasibility in reaching out to the customer. Maybe certain you know, cost is not available 
uh, funding is not available with you. Maybe certain software which is required uh, is not available. Maybe the user is not aware how to use certain software, right? Uh, like uh, when Flipkart came in India, started its operation in India back in 2007-8, not many people were comfortable in using online e-commerce platform. And everyone feared that someone will rob their money. Uh, so they had to teach the customer. They had to educate them. And then they became comfortable with it. So what are the drivers and hurdles which could be positives for your idea, which could be negatives? So that need to be clearly mentioned. Then comes customer mapping. Okay, You are mapping the journey of the customer where your product will come in his journey. Suppose it starts its day in the morning. It goes to bed in the evening. So in which part of the day your product will fit into his usability? Why he will use it? Why he will use your product? What is the necessity? What is the demand being created? Right. So identify the key elements of the service. Consider all touch points. Consider the links between all the elements over the time. Identify problems in the service or areas where new things can be added. Right. So these things should be aware of. And you need to know this customer journey. How you know it? And we'll see that in the coming stage. So next stage is developing. So if you've done discovery, you have done defining your ideas. You have, you know, have jot down certain ideas, and based on that, you have you removed them or you know added or deleted based on drivers and hurdles. Now you are developing. So what is the first stage in development? You develop character profiles. Okay. So character profiles, that means whatever the persona which we have selected, whatever the sample which we have selected, now we are giving a proper character. Okay, You are identifying, you are giving more attributes to that person. You are defining the age, you are defining the demograph, you are defining the, you know, uh, where he will be working, what salary he will be having. So likewise, you'll have some 8 to 10 character profiles with you. One would be from different gender, from different age group, from different educational background. And this will give you uh, an idea how more user friendly, uh, what is the target audience, how large it will be for your product or service which you are creating. Then you create scenarios. These eight profiles which you have created, character profiles, in which scenario they will be actually using your product. What scene will be, uh, you know, uh, uh, created in their life, in their circumstances, in their day-to-day -day environment, which will make them bound to use your product. So scenarios could be, for example, a restaurant where, uh, you know, an uh, uh, XYZ person working in an XYZ company with XYZ salary is bored to go to an XYZ restaurant because he is not happy or that in vicinity where he stays, there is no good restaurant available. So you are coming up with a restaurant which has a you know, a different uh, ambience, uh, a different kind of music plays over there. Um, maybe the color of the restaurant is different. Maybe the cuisine which you are serving is different, which attracts more people. So you need to create that scenario where that uh, service or the product fits in in the character's profile. Okay. You can also do this by role playing. Role playing is the easiest method, like brainstorming helps you to come up with ideas. Role playing actually helps you to see how in reality you know uh, the things could work so what will happen so one person could be the user one person can act as a you know person who is owning the restaurant or a customer or somebody could be waiter what happens in that process and uh, how you are going to change it so whatever you have envisioned in the start that this is something which is going wrong and it needs to be changed you can showcase that in role playing okay and it helps you to refine again your, you know, ID, right? Now, because you are developing it, so it gets more better. Then you come across service blueprints. Uh, blueprint is basically the way things will work in the real world. So you are jotting down things for the various ideas which you have uh, mentioned. How the things will work in reality? Okay, from start from the where the product is being created or the service is service is created how it will go to the user how you will get feedback from the user and uh, these are the people who are going to give the feedback to you so 
you are coming full circle. So you need to identify what will be the supply chain, how the things will work from X position to Y position and back to X as a feedback. Right? Then once you have that in place, you go for prototyping, the most important aspect in the double landmark. So you are not going to create a big restaurant. You are not going to buy the space directly and start you know, uh, your restaurant. You will first enact things. You will first build a prototype. As to you will uh, first create the cuisines, give it a trial for the users will be you know, your character profiles and get feedback from them. What is that they like? What is that they dislike? How it could be made better, right? What kind of color? Uh, of the hotel. So suppose I'm going to create a restaurant. I'll ask as a questionnaire in the survey, uh, which hotel did you visit, you know, recently? And what was the color of the hotel? Can you recollect it? Did you like the color of the hotel? How was the ambience? What kind of music was being played? Right? How was the delivery of the, how, how was the waiter service? So how was the hospitality? Various other questions. So you can ask direct, indirect questions. Uh, don't give direct idea as to what you are going to do, but you can, you know, have an insights from them. What is that could be changed? Uh, some more insights, which can help you in building a good prototype. Once a prototype activity is done and you have a good feedback, uh, then comes the target of delivery. In delivery, basically, you start with phasing. What is phasing? You're actually doing a prototype delivery, okay? Phasing is process in which you are actually enacting how things will work and you are going to get feedback from the people who are trying your things, okay? So whatever product you have created, whatever service you have created, whatever prototype of your app you have created, an APK file, you give it for the character profiles to try and test and see what are the glitches, okay? This is phasing. Why it is useful? You are again narrowing down, you are refining it, whatever the problems are being faced by the user. It's like the beta version, you are giving it for trial and testing, and then you are seeking feedback, and so it could be changed. Then comes the final testing. In the final testing, you you know actually kind of um, take your product and give it to your users as a, as a, end, a final product, and then you start seeking feedback from them. Then you start, uh, you know, getting more insights, and all of this information which you are getting as a final testing, you are storing that information, you are collecting that information, which is vital for your product 2.0. So if you are designing a software, obviously it is not going to stop at 1.0. Even if it's a hardware product, it is no or not always our same product which goes on for ages. There has to be 2.0, 3.0, 4.0 in mind. And likewise, when you do the final testing, you have to see everything works smooth and fine and you have good feedback from the end user. And then you also store that information, good or bad, to make changes in the further evaluation process. Now, based on the evaluation, evaluation is basically not only from customer's perspective, whatever you had envisioned, what is that? The, uh, you know feedback you have got were you you know what was the percentage as to what you thought is expected by the user and how much you have been able to match what is the evaluation is basically the criteria how much you have succeeded in meeting the end users demand all right so it's because as a founder we feel always you know there will be that this is the problem and this is we are trying to solve but here in evaluation, you actually get the feedback as to what areas you know you have touched base in the customer's journey in the problem is they will face. Then comes the feedback loops. Feedback loops is basically it could be on the app where you get your feedback from the every user for every purchase they make. This helps in making the product better. This helps in uh, spin-offs. This also helps in spin out. If spin-offs are basically after the version one, what is that new version you can come up with in the same product category? Spin-outs are specifically, if not this, what is that other thing you will try? Okay, if this not work. So 
uh, the double diamond approach does not guarantee that whatever you do in this process will be 100% correct in one go. It's not linear process. It does not go from A to B and that's it. No, there are instances where you have to take a pause, come back to A again from where you started. You know, regenerate your ideas, reiterate the problems, reiterate the way you're going to solve it, reiterate the technology which you're going to use. All of these things, you know, help in building it. And uh, whatever you do in this process, you store that information as method banks. From the first activity where you, you know, start with creating a sample to the end where you are actually evaluating. Whatever happened, you have to use this as a method bank. And that is how in today's world in automobile industry, they have come up with some 14 principles of Toyota. The 14 principles of Toyota is basically for manufacturing in automobile industry. There is one thing called Kaizen or just in time, which is used by Toyota. And Toyota founders created these 14 principles uh, which are being used by all global automotive companies today in creating their product because it saves time it saves their material it saves their energy it saves uh, you know human resource capital lots of other things right so when you once you have done a process that method bank should be available and handy to you so you can actually go back again and reflect on it and make sure you don't repeat the mistakes again you learn from it and it helps you guide, you know, to take further steps. So that is the double diamond approach. And uh, talking about sustainability in business, uh, Acharya Chanakya, you know, who was a philosopher and guide to Chandragupta Maurya in, uh, you know, uh, nearly 2,700 years uh, back, uh, he always talked about environment, society, and economy. You know, he always pressured, he always put forward that impact to environment should be considered in all the activities which we pursue, then how it is going to impact the society and uh, you know how it's going to make our economy better. And this is a very ancient wisdom of our philosophers, which the world is not talking about sustainable development goals and everyone is talking about sustainable startup model. So you start with why, how and what, which is also the golden serpent mentioned by Simon Sinek, in which you focus on you know, the world needs a paradigm shift for sustainability. And that's why you need to think why. How you are going to bridge the gaps which lie between opportunities and the strengths. And what exactly is basically the support, education, new policies and new outlook of society which is needed towards doing such wonders. And if you don't have any idea for startup, you can always look at the sustainable development goals, the 17 goals given by World Economic Forum which are you know, mentioned on the screen. And you can start going in depth in this, creating samples, uh, identifying problems you know, faced by them. And this can give you a head start in your problem solving journey of becoming an entrepreneur in the future, right? So with that, I would like to stop my presentation. Thank you for listening to me so patiently. If you have any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Yes, anyone would like to ask any question, any feedback, any insights? Guys, if you have any uh, questions, you may ask on the chat box, please. I have one question for all of you. And if you answer this, I'll be gifting you a book which will reach to your home address uh, once you answer this question. So the question is,
Yeah. The question is basically, uh, and you have, you know, approximately 15 seconds to answer this. Uh, who is the chief executive officer of Niti Aayog? Because I am a mentor of change with Niti Aayog as well. And uh, with Atal Innovation Mission. So, yeah, who is the CEO of Niti Aayog? And if you can answer this in the chat box, you get a book as a gift, which will be delivered to your postal networks. Last 10 seconds. Should I change the question? Yes, impact on that question. Amitabh Khan is the right answer, Vanessa. So you can uh, either send your postal address to Bipin and I will ask my team to send you across the copy of The Fun of Being in a Startup, which talks about uh, the journey of a startup founder. And it will surely give you insights in what is required for doing a startup. Many congratulations. And thank you for being participative and answering that question. So Sunil, sir. Are you there? I yes, feel Sunil sir has some network issues. So, Andre, can you continue? On behalf of Mozilla Campus Club CRC, I'd like to thank our guest speaker who spared time from his busy schedule to enlighten us on this topic of great importance. Your knowledge and insights have enlightened our minds and inspired us greatly. Thank you all for your time and patience and may you have a good day. Thank you so much, guys. And have a great day. All the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye -bye. Guys, the feedback form has been posted. Kindly fill it and you may leave.